Well, everyone, welcome to another Rock Life podcast. Thank you for listening, viewing. I'm here with Pastor Dan. Uh, there came a time where we were at a ISOM regional conference, mm-hmm. and Pastor Jim was teaching a session. During that session, he started to introduce the people that were pastors on staff, right. and so um, you know he went through this pastor. At the time, we had David Archibek with us. He's mm-hmm. our music praise and worship pastor, and here's Pastor Joel Everado. Right, He's right. Restoration. Here's uh, you know Pastor Dan Roth, and he squinted his face. And Pastor Jim is so funny because when he hears from God, oftentimes he'll he'll make a face. Mm-hmm. And over time, just knowing his ministry and yeah. his life, his personality, I've I've seen when he's hearing from God and so he squinted his face he said Pastor Dan's the and I at the time I thought he maybe forgot (laughs) that I was the young adults pastor because that's not at the time that wasn't something that was popular in the church world we we were one of the ministries um, that had had kind of been groundbreaking Mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. sense of what we did Um, and he said he's the executive pastor Mm. and I thought okay you know so afterwards as we're walking out Pastor Jim pulls me aside and says, hey, so you got a promotion, huh? And I laughed. Yeah, yeah. And he said, I guess you're going to need a raise, too. <laughs> and I laughed. Yeah. And he says, no, I'm being serious right now. You're the executive pastor. That wasn't me talking. That was the Spirit of God speaking. And you're going to be the executive pastor now. And you're going to get a raise. And you're going to get a, right. a new authority here. Right. And I was floored. Right. Because, um, first of all, I didn't know what an executive pastor was. Yeah. Didn't know what my job description was. Uh, second of all, you know, I, I was kind of like, yeah. what's going on? You know, <laughs> right. like, what, what are you doing, God? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and um, it, it was just unreal to me that God had done something like that, yeah. you know, because I was just faithfully serving. And again, I, I you know, I could have done the young adults ministry right. for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I, I could have served in that capacity. I could have been fulfilled and happy mm-hmm. reaching young adults. Um, you know, we really do have a heart to this day for, mm-hmm. for young adults right. because uh, that was a burden that was birthed in us in prayer, yeah, you yeah. know, and when you're connected like that, I believe that you you're, you never lose those right. connections. And so we do have a special place in our hearts for, yeah. for the young adults ministry. But um, as I became the executive pastor and Pastor Jim announced that to the staff, it was amazing because on the surface level, nothing really changed. Right. But people started walking into my office and asking me things. Right. And I had people that I used to ask them advice, yeah. asking me advice. Right. And it was like, you've been a pastor for 20 years yeah. and yeah. you're asking me about yeah. this. Well, you're the executive pastor. That's your job. Mm-hmm. And it was a pendulum shift yeah. for me. Like, I, I have to start figuring this thing out. And through the course of time, Pastor Jim actually told me, hey, most churches, when they talk about an executive pastor, they're the ones that run the church. The right. senior pastor will give vision. Right. They'll preach, but the executive pastor is behind the scenes running right. everything. And I didn't have giftings to mm. run a church. Mm. I, I didn't go to run a church school. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I went to school to be a pastor. Yeah. Yeah. They taught me how to preach. They yeah. taught me some basics. But yeah. a lot of this stuff in practicum, mm-hmm. administrations, finances, yeah. the business side of church, all yeah. that kind of stuff, they can tell you about that. Right. But, uh, you know, until you get in there and you still kind of open the hood and look under the, right. you know, yeah. the, start looking at the engine, it's yeah. kind of like, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And when when I started to see behind the scenes and look at what we were doing, I, I realized overwhelmingly that I was incapable of the job. Right. That I, I didn't start a church from the ground up like Pastor Jim had. I, I didn't have 20 member congregations that grew to a 200 right. member congregation, that yeah. grew to a 2,000 member congregation, that yeah. grew to a 25,000. Yeah. I mean, I didn't go through that process to know what to do, how to do it, what systems were in place. So I, I I remember sitting at my desk mm. and crying out to God and saying, God, I don't know what to do. I need you to grace me and gift me. I need a gift of administration. I need the gift of discernment. I need to hear your voice. Uh, I need your giftings to lead. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I need your favor. Um, I need to hear your, your wisdom. And God graced me. God gifted me to be able to be the executive pastor of this church. And I did that faithfully about five years um, just serving there. So, you know, I'd been a pastor about 12 years and and was serving faithfully. And once again, found myself in a place, I could do this for the rest of my life. I could serve the senior pastor of this church for the rest of my life. Now, Pastor Jim, he's very prophetic Mm -hmm. and he's very Mm spirit-led. And so he started years prior to the transition 
transitioning the church, the mm. entire church, into more of a mode of a teaching team, right. not being so reliant yeah. on Jim and Deborah, right. but started weaving myself, mm. we weaving Pastor Luke, yeah. um, every now and then Pastor Jess right. or, or Dr. Paul, right. different people into the pulpit to get the church off of him. Mm -hmm and get it onto what his prayer was, that yeah. they would know the name of Jesus, not the yeah. name of Jim Cobray. Yeah. We prayed every time, don't come to listen to a man or a woman, the young yeah. or the old, and so very gracefully, skillfully, yeah. he'd weed me in every couple of weeks. Yeah. We'd Pastor Luke in, you know, yeah. every so often, and uh, just, just start woven in this teaching team mentality, and, and uh, my responsibilities grew over that mm -hmm. time. Um, you know, Pastor Deborah and I, she, she mm -hmm. Would, would have some hard conversation with me. I used to do this, and now yeah. you're doing this, and, right. and take it, and right. lead it this way, and yeah. do these things, you know? And so I, I really grew up, in, yeah. and very grateful that I got to do that. Mm -hmm. Very grateful for those five years, because those were formative years for where I'm at today. Yeah. And, um, you know, ha had I not struggled in those areas, I don't think yeah. I would have grown. Yeah. Um, you know, if I just went from being the young adults pastor to where I'm at, I, I would have crumbled. Yeah. under the pressures and the weights that come in being associated with the, the senior pastor position. Um, but there, there was a time, in, and I know the church will probably recall that as, as Luke and I were coming up, Pastor mm -hmm. Jim had a back surgery, right. you know, and, and I had said, Luke and Dan are going to take this mm -hmm. while I'm, I'm out on back surgery, mm -hmm. and, and he stepped back in ministry. And so we operated under that right. for a period of time, mm -hmm. and I know the church was preparing for right. that, that we're going to take this together. And, you know, I, I, I know things with God don't always turn out the way we think that they, yeah. they seem. And on the surface, we were all prepared right. for something different than what, what happened. But again, the, the prophetic word of the Lord, um, we were needing to get organized. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at the ministry and looking at moving forward. And we realized in order to move forward the way we need to, we really needed uh, a more strict level of organization. So we right. went to Pastor Jim, who still was the senior pastor. Yeah. And we said, hey, we need to get organized. We're, we're, we're bumping into each other in right. some ways, and, right. and we need to define some things. And, and as we move forward in the future, um, we need some clear direction. And so we need, we need you to help us yeah. and give us your wisdom. You know? And Pastor Jim said, here's the wisdom. You want organization? Here it is. Dan, you're the senior pastor. Luke, you're the executive pastor. And I'm the happy pastor. I'm retired. Right. And uh, that was a shock to right. all of us. We yeah. did not know going into that meeting mm -hmm. with something as simple as organization that right. we were going to come out with that. Yeah. And just like in that I saw regional yeah. conference when I became the executive yeah. pastor, here I was thrust into something. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, if I'm honest, I'll tell you, man, I, I inside freaked out like, yeah. whoa, yeah. I wasn't prepared for this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, thank God Luke's my executive pastor. Yeah. He yeah. has gifts that I don't have. Mm -hmm. Um, he he has been trained. He's got a business degree. Mm -hmm. The guy is wicked smart. Right. He is a great preacher, great communicator. I lean on him for a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and um, I'm I'm so thankful that he's in ministry, and that he is here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I I'm just grateful. He's a gift from God to mm -hmm. me personally. I love him so much, and uh, and and definitely I know he's my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. He's my mm -hmm. brother-in-law, but it's my brother in the Lord too. Yeah. And um, and the guy. The guy spurns me, mm -hmm. if I could use it, stirs me up, or, you know, yeah. the Bible says to, to prod one another. Right. The guy is, has been somebody who's helped me to be a better Christian. Mm -hmm. He's helped me to be a better leader. I'm still growing, still serving the Lord, still learning. And um, my endeavor is to make Jesus known, to pastor people and to love people to life, and to continue the work that was started here. Yes, things are going to be different as we move forward. Yes, I know that God is going to give me, again, gifts and callings and things that are different than, than what we've seen in the past. But, uh, you know, I think that God still wants to love people to life. Right. I still still know that it's God's desire that the Inland Empire shall be saved. Yeah. What that looks like may, yeah. may look a little different, but right. thank God He knows what's needed for now. There are people who are better preachers, probably better pastors, more smart, um, have more gifts and, and natural abilities, have better understanding and judgment when it comes to business sense and, mm -hmm. and running the back end of the church. But I know that I'm called. Yeah, I know yeah. that I'm anointed. And so I know that in God's eyes, there was no one else that he wanted to put in this place. We had our best days are, are right in front of us and, and right ahead of us and that God is going to do great and mighty things, that there's things that were dreams and visions. You know, the Bible says old men dream dreams, the young yeah. men see visions. And yeah. so I've got visions for our future. Pastor Jim and Deborah had dreams that this side of heaven they may not see, but I, I can see visions ahead in our future that there's going to be lines outside the door, people waiting to get in church. There's going to be traffic jams on the freeway right. uh, to get on, uh, 
down the off ramp to right. get here. Right. Uh, I, I can see churches built all over the world that bear maybe not the name of the Rock Church World Outreach Center. Who cares? Right. You know what I mean? Jesus yeah. is the Rock. Right, right. But they bear His name. Right. And they lift up His name. You know, and, and they're preaching the gospel, and not only the Inland Empire, but California, yeah. the United States. Yeah. The world shall yeah. be saved. That's that's, right. that's the vision that's yeah. in our heart, and it's greater than us, right. greater than me. Thank God, you know. And and uh, it's going to take the whole body of Christ, and and that's where we're looking forward to the future and loving Jesus and loving people, and we will spend and be spent yeah. for the sake of the gospel. All that we are, all that we have, all that we ever will be, is for Him yeah. and for His kingdom, and and that's my story. Yeah.